Yeah, I'm going to go over some of the advantages of a gas chainsaw versus a electric chainsaw. Now, I have both, and this is like a... Actually, I actually had another video on how to rebuild the uh, carburetor on this and uh, where to get the fuel line. It goes into the gas tank because it's a special line. Cheap and stuff, but there's a how-to video on it in case you want to look around for that. It's not that hard, but but thing is with this, you got to you always got to keep the gas on hand. You got to have two cycle mix, right? Now this saw, if it's McCullough oil, you can use 40 to 1. If it's other types of um, two cycle oil, it's 20 to 1. You know, just as a note. The other thing is, a lot of times, if it's sitting around, you're not supposed to use this stuff, but you probably got to use a little starting fluid in it to get them going. So, you know, but probably start right away. Oops, maybe not. <laughs> Well, it did start right away, but I was holding the camera. I had to like put my hand on it and start it up right away. So that's the one thing. If you got these laying around, because um, you know I had to hold it with my, you know, I was holding the camera. That was a deal. But um, you know, if you have these laying around, actually, I realized, uh, you know, I knew the fuel line was bad, so I changed that. But it needed the carburetor rebuilt because it has like uh, rubber diaphragms in them, like these, all these little motors. That's another thing you gotta watch out for. So if you have this sitting around a while, now the other thing I do, which is two cycle mix, I put some fuel stabilizer in there because actually that'll keep the stuff from getting gummed up. Actually, I can leave the fuel in there for a couple years and stuff. It's no problem as long as the fuel stabilizer is in there. Make sure you do this little stuff because it's like when you need something, <laughs> it ain't going to work. But I'd recommend you get the electric one. Now, the problem with the electric is if you've got no electricity and you have no generator, right? But what you can do is this is a, actually this battery is from a while ago. You can see it's from July uh, 2008, and here it's 2013. But I always kept this thing on a trickle charger quite often, uh, you know, a good dual stage charger electronic so the battery's like brand new even though it's old they batteries can last way 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 longer than these expiration dates if they never get discharged hard so what i do is i have a 1200 watt inverter i'd use a 1200 or a 1500 watt inverter and here's an electric chainsaw these are cheap this little saw will work like crazy Actually, a lot of times, too, he has the oiler up here, the oiler, the, uh, the manual oiler. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a steel container with old motor oil, and I just dump the blade in it. And as the blade's getting heated up, I'll just dump it in there to cool everything down. And these chains will last forever. That's what, that's what, you know, it's excessive heat and lack of lubrication that kills the chain. Just as a note. But, uh... If you have a big battery like this, I forgot how many amper hours is this is. It's probably rated in, well, it's uh, 870. Cold cranking amps is 675. I don't know what the amper hours is quite a bit. Uh, you know, you can see it's a big battery. It's, uh, excuse me, yeah, 125 amper hours. So, it's and it's designed for deep cycle you know, that trolling motors and stuff. But you're better off, actually, if you're only gonna have one chainsaw, get like this set up, because this can actually work with uh, electric drill, uh, electric sawzall, um, you know, a, a electric um, circular saw, you know, things like that. I mean, there's a lot of hand tools that you, can need, you might need, and actually you can work with work lights and stuff like that. So if you have the gas chainsaw, that's all it is, it's just a gas chainsaw. And the advantage of the gas chainsaw is you can take it anywhere, right? But then the disadvantage is you gotta store two cycle mix, you gotta have uh, extra oil, this the gas can go bad, but that's not a problem if you put the fuel stabilizer in there. I'd recommend you keep some engine starting fluid, even though you're not supposed to do that with two cycle engines. You're pretty much sometimes, if the thing's been sitting around a while, you might need it. And, uh, but if you have one, I'd recommend this, the uh, electric chainsaw. Now this has the pole trimmer on it, which 
you know, you could just disconnect it and plug it in here and just use this saw, but I usually leave the pole trimmer on it because it, you know, I can use it like a regular saw even with the pole trimmer on it. Now the thing is, make sure you have good contact on the battery, you know, and I don't use alligator clips. These are like uh, regular O-rings and they're screwed down here and it's clean, so you got good contact. In other words, you know, you could put these on here with alligator clips, but I don't like that. I don't like that. That's why you want this type of battery. Then the first thing you do is you turn it on and you hear the fan come on. You don't want to hold the, you know, start the device and then start this. You want to start this first. Now you got power to the device and uh, you can see uh, it works. It works fine. So, uh, you know, the thing is, the thing is, um, you want to make sure that, um, you know, you have enough power in your inverter, 1200 or 1500 watt, it ain't going to work with 600 watts. I found that even 600 watt inverters, depends on which one it is, will not operate a lot of drills, even a 3 8 drill. You got to really get something more powerful than that. Um, now, <laughs> the beauty of this is you can pretty much take this battery in this someplace, and also you need you don't need nothing fancy. You can just take and put this on a um, what do you call it? A hand truck, you know, like a little hand truck. Throw the battery on there, put this on top of it, just tie a rope around it, and then off you go. Right? You just take it around, so it's not a problem. So it's a slick idea, and uh, it, you know I personally would recommend this better. So should work and just to make sure it does work I mean it does work even under load too but you might find uh, if it's really strained you might have to reset your uh, what you call it your inverter but 1200 watts is actually good for like a refrigerator it's pretty powerful stuff Still, I'm going to tell you, the, the beauty of this way is like the cost between the chainsaw, the gas, and the electric is quite a bit of difference. In other words, you could buy the battery and the inverter for like, nah, well, maybe not quite, but it might be a little bit more when you add the battery, inverter, and electric chainsaw together. But the thing is, you got something you can use with an electric drill, a sawzall, uh, you know, a circular saw, any other kind of power tool that you have out there, plus work lights and stuff. So, you know, this is the way to go. Like I said, if you just put this on a hand truck, you can roll this thing around. So if you're like, you know, the problem is with electric, is like if you're 200 yards away from something, you know, you want to have a gas. But if you got this battery, hey, no problem, right? So a lot more versatility this way.